Okay, so hey guys, welcome to part 24 in the F1 Manager Minardi Manager series, where we're going to be at, which, well, Nürburgring, which last season was actually our most successful track, where we scored two points last season. You know, we scored two of the four points we got last season at Nürburgring, so half of our points were from this track. It's been very successful for us, and hopefully it can be very successful for us again. You know, hopefully... You never know, we might be able to get a win like we were able to achieve at Imola. So, but that race is in two weeks' time, and I'm going to try and quickly whiz through the news because this is around the time in the season where we get tons of news coming in. So I'm going to try and whiz through it as quickly as possible. Oh wow, and straight off the bat we've got some news here, so let's start from the top. BAR confirms Gavin Fisher as their chief designer. Um, I don't know which team he's with at the minute actually. No, I cannot remember, but there you go. So BAR confirmed Gavin Fisher, and I believe he's actually one of the better ones. So it's not too bad of a move, actually, for BAR. Uh, Williams, I think, are using Supertech engines. I don't see why they can't just use a better ones like Mugen Hondas or Mercedes, but they've used Supertechs for the past two seasons. They haven't been amazing, really. And think about using them again. But here's the main news. McLaren confirms Jacques Villeneuve as their driver number one. So, you know, they ditched Hakkinen last season. And they had the opportunity to get Hakkinen. And they still haven't. They've got, an, they've got another former world champion, Jacques Villeneuve, who... I, I know come the end of his career wasn't very quick. But obviously, since this game was made in 2000, the developers still thought that Jacques Villeneuve was actually a good driver, but regardless of that, he is actually one of the best drivers in the game. He is a former world champion, so not a bad move for McLaren, and I've had Jacques Villeneuve in career mode on this game before, and he is a bit, he is pretty bloody fast. And we saw in Silverstone he was able to coax some pace out of the BAR, so not a bad move for McLaren there. And yeah. So yeah, so we got the f no. That's not our first driver announcement. That's our second one, and here we go. So BAR have now confirmed Mike Gascoigne, who is our technical director, and I think that confirms that we have gotten rid of Mike Gascoigne. I think I well, I've, I've already mentioned it that we're going to get rid of him. But BAR have now confirmed one of the top designers and one of the top technical directors. So BAR are definitely going places next season, and new components deal for McLaren. I dread to think what this could be. AP brakes, okay, AP racing brakes, so they're the joint best brakes and they're the ones that we use, so and I think that yeah I'm pretty certain they're using them already, so that's not actually a bad move for McLaren. And email for Mike Gascoigne, yeah, contract rumors, yeah. We know you're going to BAR. Anyway, so let's see if any more news comes in. And straight away we have got some more news, so Jordan think about using Brembo brakes, which are the worst they can get. So that would be a bad move. And Arrow's statement from them, uh, they're going to be retaining Gaston Mazzucane as their test driver. And obviously he used to be our test driver. And clearly, I think Arrow seemed to like Minardi Talent because they got Mark Genet for this season. And he's been outperforming Pedro De La Rosa. They got Mazzucane, clearly liked what he's been doing and decided to keep him. So, good for both parties. They're good to see Mazzucane still getting roles after leaving um, our team. And good to see... That, um, what was I saying? Good to see that Arrows like him as well. And now Jordan and rumored to be using MR brakes, which are the joint best and will be a much better move than Brembo brakes. And Luca put still for Williams. They are going to be using Super Tech engines, which aren't the best, but at the same time, they're not the worst. And also, we've seen that McLaren have paid about 21.9 million for Ford Z Tech engines. So by comparison, Williams have paid about 4.5 million less for better engines, so it's a pretty good deal I suppose in comparison to the ones McLaren and Jordan have snatched up. And yeah, I'll see if there's any more news. Oh wow, yeah, we've definitely got some more news here guys, so Jordan think about using Honda PGM electronics, which aren't the best, but I don't think they're the worst either, so they're not too great of a move. Um, but McLaren confirms Eddie Irvine as their driver number two, so already we know how the McLaren team is going to line up for next year. And actually, I don't think that's too bad of a driver lineup. Jacques Villeneuve, who is very quick in this game, one of the best drivers, bar Hakkinen and Schumacher, I think he is actually the best driver. So that's brilliant. Driver number two, Eddie Irvine, he's a solid driver number two. 
maybe not the best, but he's definitely a solid driver number two. And I, you never know, he might be able to do all right. I think he showed um, a couple of bursts of promise during the 1999 season. Well, in, at least in my F1 Magic career mode. And obviously, actually, he was in a battle for the Real Life Drivers' Championship in 1999 as well. So, not a bad signing, I don't think, from McLaren. Really not bad at all. And who else we got here? Stewart confirms Thomas Enger as their test driver. There you go. And Nuka Pert still for Jordan. Brembo breaks. Great. So, they could have chosen between Brembo's or MR's like they were rumoured, and they decided to go for the worst ones of the two they were linked with. So that's a bad move there, and yeah, we'll see if any more news comes in. Yeah, I have no idea why I bother cutting away, guys, because we always get news. Benetton are thinking about using Patronus engines, which would be a downgrade from the engines they're using at the minute. I cannot quite remember the engines they're using, but I'm pretty certain they're not Patronus engines, because well, I'm pretty certain Benetton, a team which, you know, have done amazingly, in the past, I'm pretty certain they'd be using better engines than Patronus ones, but they're the second worst they can get. No, are they? No, they're not actually. Peugeot's are the second worst. Well, I'm pretty certain they're not, they're not one of the best ones anyway. Let's put it that way. Prost are going to be using Gustav Brunner as their technical director. So, our former technical director, obviously, we had him in 1999. In 1999, and he wasn't too bad for us, to be honest. Former. Something I only recently found out, former, well, he used to be at Ferrari, so that's actually not bad at all, really. Ex-Ferrari um, personnel at Prost, so that's pretty good, to be honest. And Prost also, while at it, confirms Zanardi as their driver number one, so that means Zanardi has gone from Williams in 1999 to Sauber this year to Prost next year. So he's going all over the place, and even though I don't think much of him, at least in this game, I don't think much of him, but he keeps on having bad seasons and then falling back, although I'm pretty certain he got like a fifth place recently, so you never know, I think there is there's some life in him yet. And AP Racing have sent us the fifth model of brakes, and Magneti Rally the fifth model of electronics, which I'm guessing will be rated, yeah, they'll be rated 99. And now I cannot remember if this is the last part they give or whether they give us a sixth part, which is rated... No, I'm pretty certain... Yeah, no, they give us a sixth part, which is rated 100. So this is the second best set of brakes and electronics we're going to get this season. So our car has definitely improved, which I'll get into a bit more later on. But yeah, good to see car improvement there. And I may as well not bother cutting away because there's been news every single day. And yeah, so just two rumours. Fry think about using the worst brakes they can get, Brembo's, and Stuart think about using the worst electronics they can No, well, one of the worst electronics they can get, Vistians. And uh, to us, I'm not even going to bother cutting away, I'm really not. Uh, yeah, Bruins Bad Callow's linked to be going for Benetton, so obviously he's with Jordan at the minute. Did brilliantly with Jordan, you know, was about a quarter of a second away from a race win. And now linked to be going to Benetton. Would not be bad at all. And Jordan are now, and that's Honda PGM. So I think we know all the components Jordan are going to be using for next year. Obviously, you can check this down in the description if you want for the, all the teams and all the parts they're confirmed at the minute to be using. But you can see in the description that Jordan had confirmed Ford Z Tech engines, the worst they can get, uh, Brembo brakes, the worst they can get, and Honda PGM electronics, which I don't think they're the worst, but they're. I think they're middle ground electronics, so basically Jordan are going downhill, and the only thing they've got going for them is that they've got Roy Brin this year, who is one of the best designers, well the joint best designer, along with Neil Oatley, who we've got. So that's the only thing they've got going for them next year, and possibly good drivers if they can keep hold of them, but as we've seen, they've gone rid of Runes, well they may be getting rid of Runes by Akello, so let's see if they can get two good drivers to pull them through this difficult period, which I've can easily see they're going to go through next year. And now Arrows confirm Ekram Sammy is their commercial manager. So you never know. Um, maybe that can boost Arrows. Hopefully so. And Ekram Sammy has gone from Prost. And obviously Prost is actually higher up the grid than Arrows. So it's an improvement for Arrows at least. And new comp well, John Alacy is linked to be going to Arrows. Now that would be the biggest shock that would be the most shocking news. Sean O'Lacy, a legend 
on the Formula One grid and has been near the top of the field for, you know, for some years, going to Arrows. Now, that would be mad. I mean, this year, who have they got? De La Rosa and Jeanne, you know, two not particularly good drivers, but Jean Alessi, that would be amazing. And I'm pretty certain Jean Alessi retired in 2001, so I don't know, maybe he wants a challenge in his last year in F1, I don't know. And no component still for Benetton, that is, that they could be using Patronus engines, which is definitely a bad move, as I've already said, but there you go. And as I say, I won't bother cutting along, but I think this is going to be the last day of news. Wow. Ferrari, think about using the joint best brakes they can get. BAR confirms Rob Armstrong is their commercial manager. And Rob Armstrong is actually with Sauber at the minute, so... We're seeing more movement from other personnel. Um, AP Racing, again, joint best brakes, rumoured to be used by Williams next year. Benetton have actually confirmed Williams Barrichello as their driver number one, which means their driver number one this season is David Coulthard, actually, which means David Coulthard must be leaving the team. And David Coulthard got a win, and I believe it was in the last race he got his win. And... That's how they repay him. I don't really know what's going on there, but go with David Coulthard. No idea what's going on there, but we're brilliant to see Williams Barrichello actually getting a driver number one seat for once in his career. Um, Luca Burns still for Stewart, Vistian Electronics. That's a bad move for them. And Luca Burns still for Ferrari. That is Brembo brakes, so the worst brakes they can get. Although I'm pretty certain they've always used Brembo brakes. Just because Brembo brakes are Italian, and obviously Ferrari are Italian. <coughs> and they want that Italian pride to carry on through the team. So yeah, there you go, and I'm guessing that's been a really long news segment. Well, it's, it's going to be a long episode, like I could feel it already, but just because of the amount of news we've had to go through. But yeah, Nürburgring Grand Prix, our most successful one last year, where we got two points. And it's been a brilliant track for us, and now we'll, I'll take you on to the practice well, the practice session, if anything interesting happens, or the qualifying report. So, I'll see you guys then. Okay, so here's practice, and really there's just two things I want to point out. One, just how ba I mean, as if there's any doubt anyway, but how bad of a driver Neil McEwen is, I think this really shows it. Michael Schumacher, first by four seconds from his nearest rival. Neil McEwen, 16th. Which is brilliant, and... Similarly, Ralph Schumacher, second, his teammate Takaki, 18th. So we've seen Schumacher, well, both Schumachers are actually dominating their teammates, at least in this practice session, but... Anyway, let's just get on to the qualifying session. Okay, so the qualifying session for the European Grand Prix around the Nürburgring has just ended and this qualifying session has actually opened up a few surprises so let's go have a look at them. The person in first place is not a surprise whatsoever, it's Michael Schumacher in the dominant Ferrari and Michael Schumacher has taken every pole position so far this season and he's taken another one by an impressive 5 seconds a lap faster than second place man Johnny Herbert and now Johnny Herbert in the second McLaren was way off of Michael Schumacher but that's a foregone conclusion for this season at the moment but with Johnny Herbert in second in the McLaren it does show some promise for the struggling McLaren team and Johnny Herbert getting second is especially surprising as we saw him crash out at the end of one of his laps but fortunately he already set his quick lap which was enough to put him in second by that point Neil McEwen, who has mainly been a disappointment for Ferrari this season, especially as he was way down the order during the practice results, actually came third in this qualifying session. And while he is still several seconds a lap off of his teammate, at least he's been able to move up the field this time. The future McLaren driver, Eddie Irvine, finishes in fourth in the struggling Stewart, and then maybe it's that morale boost of going to McLaren next year, which is why he's so high up. And also maybe the potential that he can challenge his ex-team next year. Maybe all of that excitement is what has boosted his performance and put him in fourth. And then in fifth and sixth we see both Minardis with Mikasalo just two temps ahead of Damon Hill. 
which is especially surprising as much like with Johnny Herbert, we saw Mika Salo crash out at the end of one of his laps, but he'd already set his risk everything lap time, so it didn't make any difference to his grid position. But despite that, it's still a brilliant performance for the Italian team, which is a crucial result as this is their engine supplier, Mercedes-Benz. This is Mercedes-Benz's first of two home races and obviously it'll be in their interest to do well in their home race. The very surprising seventh result is Alexander Wurtz in the Sauber, which is pace we have rarely seen from the Sauber this season. Although with the other Sauber driver of Zanardi scoring a fifth place in the British Grand Prix this year, we may be seeing a resurgence of Sauber which we haven't ever seen. Ricardo Zonta finishes a very impressive 8th in the Prost, which again is pace we have rarely seen from them, and the second Sauber driver proves that Wurtz's performance wasn't a fluke as Zanardi is 9th. Just behind those three surprise results is Fizzy Keller in 10th, with Raul Schumacher really underperforming compared to where he has been this season as he's in 11th. David Coulthard, who's confirmed to be replaced next year by Brooms Barrichello, is 12th, with Heinz Alfrentz in 13th. The potential future Arrows driver, Jean Alessi, is in 14th, with Rubens Barrichello, the future Benetton driver, in 15th. Laurent Redon, for I believe the first time this season, has outqualified his teammate as he's in 16th, with Jano Trulli way behind his teammate as Trulli's in 17th, while Eddie Irvine's in 4th. Jacques Villeneuve is 18th in the BAR. The future McLaren number no. 1 driver, which we'll see next year, Jacques Villeneuve, and the former world champion, finishes behind his rookie teammate for a very disappointing performance. Speaking of disappointing performances, Takaki has had yet another one of those, and while Ralph Schumacher struggled this qualifying session, Takaki finished in a position which wouldn't have been unfamiliar from where he qualified in his Arrows days. Speaking of which, the number 2 Arrows driver of Mark Genet lines up just behind Takaki, with Pedro Diniz very disappointing in the Prost to be 21st, especially as Ricardo Zonta's 8th. And finally, the back marker for tomorrow's race is Pedro De La Rosa in the number 1 Arrows. Okay, so hey guys, so that was a qualifying result, lots of surprises there, but one thing I just want to say is obviously we've got the new electronics fitted, the new brakes fitted, and the new side pods and suspensions which we weren't able to have last race. And um, we've got this race, so a t we've got a total of one improvement on the electronics, one on the brakes, one on the side pods, and one on the suspension. So we've had a total car improvement of four. So that's a substantial improvement, and it, it wasn't good enough in comparison to the other cars we've seen. But qualifying fifth and sixth isn't too bad. And, yeah, same obviously for Mika Salo's car. Now, Mika Salo, we've got to tell him to pit in a lap later. Apparently it's a free stop strategy this race. Um, yeah, apparently it's a free stop strategy this race. And let's just see how well our guys do out there. So, obviously Mika Salo, it says he's in third, but actually he's in fifth. So I have no idea what's going on there. Um, with Eddie Irvine just there. And... Okay, what that McLaren's got is he's got his wheels very um, slanted. Let's put it that way. Um, and has there been any surprises? Mark Genet looks like he's going to get past Takaki. That will be a surprise. Come on, Genet. Genet, for not the first time in his career, I believe, has overtaken Takaki. And I think that just shows how bad of a driver Takaki really is. Wow. Or has he? I believe, but actually, I think both arrows got past Takaki. Right, normally I leave it on autopilot, but let's just find where is Takaki. Uh, gone past him. Takaki is. No, both arrows are behind Takaki. Takaki is. Okay. Whoa, how far behind are both arrows already? Um. Where's. The... Okay, so Schumacher is here, and both bloody hell! Look, they can barely see the cars ahead. They're like the manners of, you know, they're, they're basically the the Man of Russia equivalent, but in this fake 2000 season. 
Anyway, I want to get off of the arrows, put it back into active mode. Johnny Herbert is under threat from Neil McEwen, but I'm sure Johnny Herbert is actually a professional racing driver. I mean, his picture, which you've seen of him half naked on the sunbed, doesn't show that, but he's got to be better than Neil McEwen. I say got to, I know he's better than Neil McEwen. And you may have noticed I left both of our drivers on hold position because we did see two retirements last race and whether, well one of them definitely was because we left Damon Hill on push Sarlo's I don't know for certain but I am going to leave it and that was actually a pretty interesting first lap and is that Takaki behind the Sauber? We'll never know. Look how much of a gap Schumacher's pulled out. There's Schumacher there's Johnny Herbert and there's Neil McEwen got past Johnny Herbert so he's trying to Johnny Herbert he hasn't left him any room, so Johnny Herbert's retained his second place. But look at the gap Schumacher's got already. That shows Schumacher dominance there. And is this Ralph Schumacher, the other Schumacher, who's been kind of dominant. He's definitely been the best of the rest this season. Although I don't think the points tally shows it. He definitely has been. You can just tell from his qualifying performances and that. And wasn't able to make the overtaking move stick, actually. But anyway, let's actually speed up the race, and that was actually a very interesting first lap, to be honest. Yeah, Ralph Schumacher's going to get past us, because he's definitely been the best of the rest. And Mika Sai's up in 4th, but Damon Hill's in 8th, so... What's going on? Takaki's in 20th. That's the sort of positions he's been in in his Arrows days, as I said in the qualifying report. Um, yeah, now... I'm just going to leave Damon Hill to it for the time being. I might tend to push come the end of the race, but for the time being, I'm just going to leave him to it. And Neil McEwen's dropped down to 16th, 13th. This guy is all over the place. One minute, he's, you know, he's overtaken Schumacher like we saw in Australia. Next minute, he's fallen down the field massively. And actually, Damon Hill might be... Damon Hill is slipping down the order big time. Um, no, he's up into 9th now. Okay, we'll leave him for the time being. So now McEwen was in third, dropped down those positions, and is now back up into third. What is wrong with this guy? Now he's into second. Both McLarens have had driver errors. I, I wouldn't actually blame the drivers, because I know for a fact Johnny Herbert and Fizzikello are both good drivers, so maybe the McLaren car is just difficult to drive, or it doesn't suit this track, I have no idea. Mikasalo's out of a driver error. Now that is an upset. He's only on hold position, I'm pretty certain he is anyway. Uh, Salo's on hold position, Damon Hill's on hold position. Looks like we might not actually do very well this race. Obviously, this was our most successful race last year, and it definitely can't be now. It could be the most successful race for Damon Hill um, in our team. Because obviously the best result he has got for us so far is fourth. And if we get a ton of retirements like we saw last year, we could easily see him get fourth. And Genet's out of a fuel error. Which are dis I think Arrows have just realised that Minardi talent's doing a bit too well, and they don't want them to be outshone by Arrows talent, and now Takaki's out of a driver error because he's shocking. Eddie Irvine out with a driver error. It's I bet you McLaren are regretting signing him. Although that is one error. I don't remember seeing I don't remember seeing too many errors from Eddie Irvine both this season and last season, so I won't read too much into it. It's a one-off mistake. We all make them. But Schumacher's still dominating this race. One lap ahead of his teammate. Uh, what have we got? We've John Alacy out with a driver error. Damon Hill was almost in the points. I'm not going to turn to push because we've seen lots of driver errors this race. Damon Hill's in the points. That's good to see because we've had... Well, okay, let's slow down time. So, De La Rosa's out an engine failure. Nothing we haven't seen from the arrows. Ralph well, Schumacher's out of a driver error. Neil McEwen's out of an engine failure, so hopefully we can see a similar failure for Michael Schumacher. And now if we get two more retirements from people ahead of us, um, this will be our most successful race with Damon Hill on the team. And both Jordans are ahead of us. Wow, we... Jordans, you know... They've been... A fr you know, they've been challenging us all the time, and now they've actually surpassed us this race. And Michael Schumacher, electronics failure on the second to last lap. Now that is drama, and that is going to hurt his driver's championship standings massively. Wow, now that is an upset for Michael Schumacher. I'm sure he's going to be gutted. Obviously, Ferrari are going to get no points this race. And I think Jordan might 
Yeah, Jordan Brooms by Keller wins the race. Ben, uh, David Coulthard in the Benetton second, so another brilliant performance from him. Heinz Alfred in third. Damon Hill gets another fourth place for us, which isn't too bad. And um, Petra Diniz in the Prost. So the Prost have scored their first points this series. Petra Diniz, congratulations to him and the Prost team. They've scored their first points this series. It's taken them an entire. It's taken them 22 races to score a point in this series, but congrats to them. And Michael Schumacher is still able to get a point because Jack Villeneuve had a driver error one lap before, even though it was chronologically it was afterwards, but lap wise it was before. So madness. Uh, Ricardo Zom took it easily. They've got on a point. Well, a, we could see a double points finish on Prost if Ricardo Zonta didn't have a bargeable failure. But they get long with Don driver error. No surprise there. Um, but yeah, I think I. Backed um, McLaren to get the drivers champ, uh, the constructors championship. At the minute, Jordan definitely, because we have McLaren. They've got a better chassis than Jordan, and they've got the same engines. They got similar level drivers, so really, Jordan are just doing brilliantly. I'm sure Eddie Jordan's going to be thrilled with this. I mean, whenever has Eddie Jordan had performances like this with his team? Never really. Um, yeah, double podium for Jordan, which. Um, isn't the first time we've seen that. Um, the first win for Jordan, I believe, this series. Brilliant stuff here. But I'm happy because we still got some points for our team. And I think Jordan are going to surpass us in the Constructors' Championship. And Benetton might do as well because they outscored by... Well, they got six points. Damon Hill would have got three. So they outscored by three points. Yeah, 10-6, 4-3-2-1. Yep. Bruins by Kello wins in Nürburgring. Eddie Jordan later commented that the win was an excellent... No, Eddie Jordan later commented that the win was an excellent result. I cannot speak. Eddie Jordan later commented that the win was the result of excellent teamwork and thanked everyone, including the team sponsors, who were also very happy to see Bruins by Kello on the top step of the podium. So Eddie Jordan's very happy there. I'm sure that should boost his manager rating considerably, because... People have definitely underrated Eddie Jordan in this game. I mean, his manager rating's um, much lower than I believe it should be. And now Jordan, yep, have the most advanced barge boards. Well, obviously, they uh, we know that they've got the other joint best design of Roy Brin this season. So we know that they're definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with. I mean, by comparison, I think this is why maybe um, McLaren aren't getting second... In the, well, aren't topping the constructors like I thought they would. Because Jordan have Roy Brin... When McLaren have Andy LaFleming. No idea who he is, but he's definitely a lot worse than Roy Brennan. I think that's why Jordan are the best um, overall team in the Constructors rather than McLaren, which is definitely surprising to me because I backed McLaren to win Constructors and I'm still going to back him, even though I believe it's between Jordan or Ferrari now. And we still got 900 grand prize money from that fourth place on Damon Hill. And I believe that's the first time Damon Hill has outraced Mikasalo this season. So let's just have a look how things stand now. Drivers' Championship. Michael Schumacher still winning, but David Coulthard caught up. Barrichello caught up. Frenson caught up. Damon Hill um, caught up. Where is Takaki in this? Takaki has still got his two points. His two points, which I believe he got in Australia. So he did well in Australia and just hadn't done and hasn't done well since. Constructors' Championship. Jordan are right behind Ferrari now. Benetton are one point ahead of us, and we're fourth in the Constructors, three ahead of McLaren. So basically, the teams which I thought we might be ahead of, like Jordan and Benetton, we're behind, and the teams I thought were going to smash us, McLaren and Williams, we're ahead of. Madness. But yeah, Prost, there you guys can see, they're the last team this series to score points, but they have finally scored points this series, so congratulations to them. And Aris haven't scored any this um, this season. And manager ratings. Jean Torres now overtaken me as the best manager. Rocco Benetton, I believe, you know, he definitely should be that high up. Eddie Jordan, again, I believe he deserves to be high up as well. But I believe Eddie Jordan, you know, should possibly be ahead of me. He should definitely be in the top three. But there you go. Ron Dennis, worst manager. I mean, as I say, I back them to win the Constructors. And they, some races they do brilliantly, some they do terribly, obviously. Both drivers have a driver error this race. It's madness. 
But, yep, so that's been the Nurburgring Grand Prix. It wasn't our most successful, um, no, it wasn't our most successful one this, uh, this season, unfortunately. But now we got Monte Carlo. Now, this is going to be an interesting race. I mean, last year, when we were the terrible Minardi, we actually out-qualified Damon Hill. Oh, God, we out-qualified Damon Hill. That's worrying. Obviously, now we got Damon Hill. But we also over well we would we qualify one place behind Hackenden and then actually overtook Hackenden which I mean if you don't remember this you can check the season one montage which I'll put a link to in the description or a YouTube card on screen here but very interesting race or you could just watch the Monaco episode itself but the season one montage kind of exemplifies those points of us out um, overtaking Mika Hackenden and obviously Arrows had a brilliant qualifying session here obviously with them I believe Pedro de la Rosa in practice got 4th and I think in qualifying they may have got 7th and 8th or something so it throws up some surprises as we know hopefully we can do well you never know but I'll see you guys yeah for the Monaco Grand Prix next episode so I'll see you then